Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we're talking about a very ambitious lesson, one of my favorite lessons, calorimetry. Now by the end of this lesson, uh, we're going to try to make sure that you understand what specific heat is, uh, how it's measured in calories, joules, or calories, there's a difference, uh, and then how to use uh, the specific heat equation to tie it into the calorimeter, and then figure out all kinds of stuff. Really, just a, just a cornucopia of greatness today. And so the cat and the mouse are going to talk a little bit about apple pies. Um, if you ever got hit in the face by a, a, uh, an apple pie, you'll know that that really burns. There's a lot of heat that comes out of that apple pie. And one of the reasons is that that apple pie uh, holds a lot of heat due to something called specific heat. And, and not all things would. If you got hit in the face with something different, there wouldn't be as much heat trapped in that object. And so specific heat is the, is the amount of energy in joules it takes to raise the temperature of an object uh, one degree Celsius, given one gram of the substance. And so that sounds like a pretty heavy definition, but it's, it, it's not that bad when you sit down and, and beat it up bit by bit. Um, because uh, the units are going to be joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, and, and again, so it's the amount of energy in joules it takes per gram per degree Celsius. As the grams go up, as the as the degree Celsius goes up, you're going to need more and more energy. So, so again, it's it's an unusual unit, but I hope it makes sense. Um, now, now you can just call it specific heat, but don't just call it heat capacity. Heat capacity is actually an extensive property beyond uh, the scope of what we're talking about today. But specific heat is an intensive property. Um, the higher a substance's specific heat, the more energy it's going to take to raise something uh, one degree Celsius given one gram. And, and the flip side of that, which people often forget, is things with high specific heat, uh, you're going to have to require more energy to heat up, but it's also a lot more energy that's going to come out on the flip side. Um, for example, water specific heat is very high. It's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, and that's really high, um, but we're, you're used to that. I mean, we use hot water bottles at night because that water holds a lot of heat. Uh, temperatures tend to be a lot more mild around water because during the day that water is absorbing a lot of that heat energy that would be going into you and at night it's releasing that heat energy so it makes a great heat sink. Um, again another amazing thing about water and really that specific heat is a good order of magnitude above a lot of other stuff. Uh, by the way the symbol I like is C sub P but you can certainly use S if you want to. Different states of matter can have different specific heats by the way. And cat and mouse bring up a very important point. Um, it's very common to, to be, uh, uh, just have, a, have a temptation to talk about specific heat in terms of a rate, like something heats up or cools down quicker. Um, specific heat can certainly be related to how quickly or slowly something heats up or cools down, but that's not a direct result of specific heat. Um, there's a lot of things that go into how quickly or slowly something heats up or cools down, uh, specific heat being one of those. So again, try to avoid using time in your definitions for specific heat. Simply talk about it, it's the amount of energy it takes per gram per degree Celsius. How long it takes, that's a different lesson. Uh-oh, you know what happens when you know. So the equation for specific heat, um, really for heat change, is Q equals delta T times uh, mass times Cp. And again, the order of that isn't really all that important, um, but we're going to have a change in temperature in Celsius, a mass in grams this time, and you'll see why, and of course the specific heat in the units we talked about. So if we line all those up, you'll see that degrees Celsius cancels out and grams cancels out, leaving us with joules. So this is the third time, actually the fourth time I think we've manipulated an energy equation to get joules in this unit. And so uh, you might want to go back and review all that, because again, we want to make sure that the units work out. Remember that when you're figuring out delta T, uh, or any delta, uh, you're always looking for final minus initial conditions. And common sense should, should get you through that. Again, uh, McDonald's apple pies are scary for a lot of reasons. One is there's an awful lot of heat in there. So much heat. So let's do a couple uh, practice problems here. Uh, let, let's, let's pretend that we're holding a cup of tea until it cools down to body temperature. Um, assuming that you captured all of the heat in the tea, uh, we would be looking at a change in temperature of the T from the T's point of view of negative 28 degrees Celsius, again, final minus initial. Um, and so the Q in this case 
would be delta T times the mass. The mass is already in grams. That was helpful in the specific heat. So they're really pretty easy to set up. These are just algebra problems, unusual units, uh, but, but really not that hard to solve. So that ends up being a negative 23,000 joule change. Um, and again, that negative change is exothermic because the heat is leaving the T. Um, so a negative delta Q is an exothermic process. Now, if you just want to say you've got 23,000 joules leaving, as long as you're specifying it, you should be in good shape. Now, a very contrived follow-up problem was, would be to say, okay, given that temperature change and given that heat change, um, let's swap out the water with gold. Um, so how much gold would we need? Um, so again, it's, it's, it's a weird concept, but pretend that you're holding a pile of gold and you captured all the heat from that gold cooling down. How much gold would you need to get the same amount of heat? Um, now, hopefully, conceptually, you realize that, well, look at the gold specific heat. It's super low, 0.13. So are you going to need more or less gold? You're going to need more gold. All right. So let's see if it works out that way. So I'm solving for mass. Again, always solve for your variables and then plug your numbers in so it's less work for you later. And it's great practice. Uh, we end up with 6,300 grams of gold. Um, so that would be uh, about 14 pounds of gold you would need to drop the same amount of heat that that cup of tea would. Again, water's just got a fantastically high specific heat. Of course, assuming we're on Earth, you yeah, know, Earth gravity. Um, so do you mean calories or calories? Um, so did, did you capitalize? Uh, oh, I, I don't know what to say about this. Um, you don't need calories. Um, you can do everything in joules, but calories are actually very useful because calories deal specifically with water. So it's the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Um, and this should make sense that one calorie is 4.184 joules, right? Because that's the specific, uh, specific heat of water. So calories are extremely useful because it really simplifies our math when we're dealing with water getting heated up or cooling down. The only problem is that uh, scientific calories are different than food calories. And for some reason that baffles me, and maybe someone else can let me know, uh, they, they decided to change the definition of calorie when it's capitalized. Ugh. Um, and so, um, you know, one capital C calorie is a thousand little c calories. Now, the Europeans realized how weird this was, and, and if you go on their food labels, they actually talk about kilocalories. But in America, we talk about capital C calories. But I bet there's a lot of nutritionists who don't realize the difference between a nutritional calorie and a scientific calorie. Um, I guess it's because people didn't want to look at their label and see that they were eating uh, two times 10 to the fifth calories. It might make you think twice about eating that candy bar. Um, uh, again, I, you know, I'd, I'd apologize for it if this was my fault, but there is a, there's a big difference between calories, calories, and joules. Make sure that you can convert freely between all three. Uh, you've been warned. Um, and the last thing we want to talk about is how we measure heat. And my friend, uh, Cal the Calorimeter, uh, the fighting mascot of, of Berthelow College, uh, he is here to talk a little bit about how you measure heat. Now, you can't measure heat directly with a thermometer, uh, but you can use a thermometer to help measure it if you, if you have some other things going on. Now, there are different types of calorimeters, but they all come down to the same idea is that you're heating something up and then you're looking at the temperature change of that substance. Um, uh, sometimes it's something that you put in it, like you could put unknown metals inside a calorimeter to determine how much heat leaves the metals into the water. Other types of calorimeters, you could burn something underneath and then capture the heat in the calorimeter, or you can, you can ignite things in sealed chambers inside the calorimeter. But the point is you heat up some liquid. And then based on that liquid, um, we can determine the heat that was gained or lost from the substance, right? If we know how much the temperature of the liquid changed, usually water, but it could be oil or whatever you want, you know how much stuff was in there, you have the mass, and you know the specific heat of the substance, we can figure out Q. Um, but you don't just have to figure out Q. That's the beautiful thing about this. Um, we know that whatever heat is lost by the substance is gained by the calorimeter, and that's the law of conservation of energy. But if you're clever, you can use calorimeters to figure everything out. You can use calorimeters to figure out uh, temperature. You can use it to figure out mass. You can figure out uh, heat content. You can figure out specific heat. You could set up experiments to solve for each one of these given the proper calorimeter. Um, and so uh, that's, that'll, that'll have to be a uh, discussion for another day. But there is just so much you can do with calorimeters. 
Um, so, you know, you, 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 you can really attack this topic, you can really master it. Um, there, there's so many fun things you can do with this. Uh, but I'm out of time, my 10 minutes are up. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, this, this jam-packed lesson on calorimetry. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it uh, as much as I do. Have a great day.